This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather, ho there, it's Jeff Carter, I've been welcoming you to another Sports Catastrophe birthday boy. Of course, you know the policy that I have, that I try to get people who are actually celebrating birthdays who are alive, but when researching May the 9th, I couldn't bypass this guy, even though he's been dead for eight years. And he is Tony Gwynn, who played 20 years all over the Padres. Eight batting titles, which is tied for the most in National League history. He was very consistent here. He had a 338 batting average. 15-time All-Star. Played in two World Series with the Padres, which was weird enough. And was inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame in his first year of eligibility. So Tony Gwynn was a legend. He died, well, he wore number 19 for the Padres in 2004. Well, 19 is great, and it was retired in 2004. Gwynn then became head baseball coach at San Diego State, where he played baseball and basketball, and also spent time as a baseball analyst. So anyway, the funny thing is that Tony Gwynn had a younger brother, Chris, who were, who also went to the major leagues and all that. Anyway, Tony Gwynn received scholarship offers to play college basketball, but not for baseball, which was weird. Gwynn's limited playing time in high school meant that he was drafted in the 1977 baseball draft. He wanted to play both sports for Cal State Fullerton, but the baseball coach said no. Anyway, Gwynn went to San Diego State. He played three seasons of baseball and four of basketball. He was a two-time All-American outfielder in his final two seasons and led the team in hitting. He would actually set many school records for assists. All that. Green could have played baseball as a freshman, but he was a little bit stocky. All that. So anyway, Green was a left fielder slash DH at San Diego State and was not a good defensive player, but when it mattered most was hitting, he was improving and all that. So the San Diego State superstar was drafted in the third round by San Diego, the big boys, the Padres, the 58th overall pick. He didn't like playing for the Padres at first because of the, the, the ugly uniforms and all that. McKeon wanted, Jack McKeon, the GM of the Padres, wanted Tony Gwynn, but the Padres chose three other players ahead of him, and McKeon threatened to walk out of the draft room and San Diego didn't pick him. However, later that day, he was selected by the San Diego Clippers in the 10th round of the NBA draft. All that. Gwynn decided to play baseball with the Padres. Well, obviously, he's a 10th rounder. Gwynn actually was worried about the transition between an aluminum bat as used in his NCAA and a wooden bat in the pros. But he said, ah, uh, whatever. So he participated in spring training with the Padres in AQ. He wasn't going to play because the outfield had Gene Richards, Rupert Jones, and Sesto Lascano. So Gwynn was in AAA. He was promoted to the big boys July 8, 19, 1982. He started in center field in place of Rupert Jones, and it's worth a bat. He had a double off Sid Monge. Anyway, Gwen unfortunately injured his wrist diving for a ball at the artificial turf at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh and missed three weeks. His 289 batting average as a rookie in 54 games was the only time he hit below 300. That's amazing and all that. So unfortunately, Gwen would re injure his wrist in Puerto Rico. And then he decided to begin using video recording to review his at-bats. And it worked out quite well. His first full season with the Padres was the year San Diego 
went to the 1984 World Series in honor of their first owner, Ray Kroc, you know, the McDonald's guy, who didn't really like the Padres sometimes. But anyway, Gwynn got his first batting title in 1984, with a 351 average, 71 RBIs, and 33 stolen bases. He only whiffed 23 times. That's amazing. And finished third in balloting for MVP behind Ryan Sandberg and Keith Hernandez. He would have 213 hits, the Padres record. I believe he still has that record. Gwynn would bat second behind Alan Wiggins in the Padres batting order. And Gwynn knew how to hit them in. The Padres shocked the Cubs in the NLCS, went to the World Series against the Tigers, won a game. But unfortunately, the Tigers were just that good. So, anyway, once Alan Wiggins was put into drug rehab in 1985, Quinn saw fewer fastballs but more breaking balls because now he didn't have Wiggins to protect you know, in the batting order. Regardless, he did okay and all that. He would play 160 games in 1986, leading the NL in wins above replacement. He looked pretty good and all that. But the Padres were not really that good as a team, all that. So, Tony Gwynn still put up clinics and all that. In the final week of the 1989 season, he was facing pressure. Will Clark of San Francisco had the batting title at 333-332. In the final two games, Gwynn went 3-4 for four to win it. And Clark fell. Gwynn, with his batting titles in 1989, with 88 and 87, became the first NL person to win three batting titles in a row since Dan Musial in the 1950s. Gwynn thought he was underpaid and all that. But Gwyn had a little bit of criticism and all that. So he had some injury problems too. Anyway, Gwyn had a couple of surgeries and, you know, after 93, his father died of heart problems at 57. Gwyn almost quit baseball because of his dad's death, but his dad said that never be a quitter, work hard. Well, Tony Gwyn in 94, for some reason, had a lot of greatness in 94. He was relatively healthy. He batted 394, the highest in the National League since 1930, and it looked like he was going to aim for 400. Unfortunately, though, that freaking baseball strike, which ruined the 94 Expos, ruined Tony Gwynn's chances to bat 400. I think he would have gotten it, too. But still good and all that. So, anyway, Tony Gwynn would keep having a little bit of injuries. He did participate in the 98 World Series against the Yankees, who were just that damn dominant in that four-game sweep. Gwynn did bat 8 for 16, which was good, a 500 average, but the rest of the team, 203. <sighs> anyway, Tony Gwynn wanted to get his 3,000th hit fast as possible. He did so on Friday, August 6, 1999, in Montreal against Dan Smith. He did fantastic and all that. Unfortunately, a left calf injury would make him unhealthy again. However, he did reach 3,000 hits in 2,200 plus games, behind only Ty Cobb and Nat Lajoie. Gwynn had to have a left knee injury, requiring his knee to be drained seven times before he went serious and ending surgery. He just couldn't play and all that. Tony Gwynn was a free agent after the 2000 season, but the Padres signed him in 2001 for $2 million. Unfortunately, injuries would ruin him again. 
he couldn't play in the 2001 All-Star game, but he was still honored at the All-Star game. His final game of his career, he had pinch hit RBI double off Gabe Blade of Colorado. He wanted to play in the final game of the season, but he couldn't handle fly ball. So he, he pinch hit and grounded out to shortstop, but he was still aggressive. He was fantastic. I mean, the guy wanted to hit. So anyway, San Diego's baseball facility was renovated in 97 and named Tony Gwynn Stadium. Gwynn was inducted to the Padres Hall of Fame in 2002, and his number 19 retired by them in 2004. In 2007, a nine and a half foot bronze statue of Gwynn was unveiled inside the park. And after 2016, MLB said that Tony Gwynn will be remembered as the Tony Gwynn National League Batting Champion. Have you seen to the National League? Well, Gwynn was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in his first chance with 97.6%, the seventh highest in history. He was inducted alongside Cal Ripken Jr., who ironically was also under the 2001 All-Star Game. And only 46 players in the Hall of Fame have played their entire major league career for only one team. Ripken and Gwynn are two of them. Wow. And many people came to see them be inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame. What a legacy Gwynn had. You know, to play for just one team and all that. He would become baseball head coach of San Diego State. And Gwynn oversaw Steven Strasburg, who was the number one pick in the 2009 baseball draft at San Diego State. Unfortunately, Gwynn would have a bout with cancer that made him miss a lot of time and all that. San Diego State went to three NCAA regionals as the manager. Personal life, he was married to Alicia and was the father of R&B singer Anisha Nicole and Major League Outfitter Tony Gwynn Jr. Who ironically, when he got his Major League debut, July 2006, he, hit, he got a hit 24 years to the day that his dad got one. Chris used to play in the Major Leagues too. Anyway. But there were health problems. He had procedures to remove non-cancerous growths from his Parotoid gland in 97, he was diagnosed in 2010 with cancer of the salivary gland and had lymph nodes removed. That meant his face was partially paralyzed on the right side. He was unable to smile. He had to go through chemo and radiation. He was deemed cancer-free. All that. Gwen said that he had a dipping tobacco habit and all that. But doctors said that it, his cancer was not linked with chewing tobacco. Anyway, Gwyn's weight peaked at 330 pounds, and he had to go through gastric banding surgery to lose weight. So, anyway. Unfortunately, he would, even though he lost 80 pounds on a liquid diet, he regained it back in solid foods. Unfortunately, Tony Gwynn died the day after Father's Day, 2014. It was just shocking what happened and all that. So anyway, he's still a legend. Eight-time batting champion. 84, 87, 88, 89, 94, 95, 96, 97. Can you imagine? Fifteen-time All-Star, seven-time Silver Slugger, five gold gloves. Uh, National League Records for the most batting titles. Season bleeding, leaking hits with seven. Well, leading you can hit, so okay, seven. And most consecutive seasons by 300 or better, 19. Okay. So, yeah, he has lots of Padres records. Well, why wouldn't he? He's a freaking San Diego legend. So, anyway, Tony Gwynn will never be forgotten. He was a great hitter who ended, who had an untimely end. Very untimely.
Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.